Recall that matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. And we, when we discuss matter, we talk about its properties. And we can talk about different kinds of properties. And I've highlighted a couple here on this slide for you. Uh, we can talk about intensive properties versus extensive properties. Or uh, similarly, we can talk about physical properties versus chemical properties. And I wanted you to be able to discern between these two to, to, to differentiate between intensive and extensive and also between physical and chemical. So let's start over here with intensive properties versus extensive properties. We discussed in class that extensive properties depend on size. All right, I'll say that one more time. They depend on size. So when we're talking about an extensive property of matter, we're talking about something like um, mass. Mass is going to depend on its size. Uh, weight will also depend on something size as will height, length, etc. Those are all extensive properties. Now, intensive properties conversely do not depend on size. So something like color doesn't depend on size. You can be huge and a car could be red or a marker could be red. Um, texture is intensive. Density is intensive. These things do not depend on size. Now let's move over here to physical properties versus chemical properties. In order to describe a physical property of something, you don't need to alter it. All right, There's no alterations needed. You can look at something and say that it's black. There's no alteration, there's no testing that needs to be done. You can say that something is soft or something is rigid. Those are physical properties. But chemical properties, often alterations are needed. Often um, testing is needed. Like saying if something is flammable. If you're trying to burn something, you're obviously going to make an alteration to it somehow. So that would be a chemical property, flammability. Or its resistance to uh, acid corrosion. That would be a chemical property. What about changes in matter? Well, we've got physical changes versus chemical changes. And they're just exactly the opposite. And so I've stated the three premises for each. Uh, a physical change. Uh, typically, the identity of the, of the thing is not lost. Right, if I tear a piece of paper, it's still paper. It's just been torn. Uh, if you break a piece of glass, it's still glass. If you... Um, all, uh, all phase changes are physical changes. I'm going to make note of that because um, that's really important. Oops, if I could spell. They're all physical. Think about it. If you melt an ice cube, it's still water. All right? The identity hasn't changed. And then we move on to the second bullet point, the change is generally reversible. Yeah, you can then freeze that water back up. You've got ice again. And no new substance has been formed. Let's go over to a chemical change. Typically, the identity is lost. If you burn some firewood, it's no longer wood. It's now ash. You can't unburn it. You can't go back and make that ash wood. And there are new substances being formed in that chemical process. All right, There's gases that are being released. So that's just a quick overview of, of matter and how we can discuss it in terms of its changes and in terms of its properties.